welcome to the That Paradox Computer Craft Tutorial Series. That was a bit of a mouthful. Maybe I should come up with something a bit snappier. So guys, how's it going? You're here because you want to learn how to Lua or how to use Computer Craft. Lua is the language that we use in Computer Craft. And I'm going to be taking you through just the extreme basics. This episode, at least, is for very, very beginners. Um, so get ready. Are you ready? I hope you are ready. So we're going to start off with the traditional Hello World script. This is something that everyone pretty much always does, and who am I to break with tradition? So um, this is the computer. We're going to be using advanced computers because they have lots of neat little functions. Um, they highlight bits of your, uh, your code or your script so that they know, um, so that you can see visually stuff. It, You'll see, we'll get into it. So um, I advise that you start up your own little single player map, set yourself into creative and um, get yourself some computers. I'm playing on Feed the Beast, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. To create our first file, we're gonna type in edit. Edit is basically the way you're gonna create a lot of your new, or pretty much a new file or a new script that you're going to work on. So edit, and we're just going to call this, um, we'll just call it test to keep it simple, tests. So type edit test and then hit enter. So we're looking now at a blank page. You can see down there in the bottom right hand corner, the numbers showing what line you're on. Uh, press control to access the menu. That's going to give you the option to save, um, to save, exit, and print, I think if you've got a printer attached, I've never actually used that before, but maybe that's for a future episode. We'll learn how to use printers. Um, cool, so, um, yeah, so press control maybe a couple of times, whatever. I imagine that you're probably gonna watch this, then go to work on your code, so that's cool. I'll just try and keep it in little bits that you can pause, go to, and then come back. So, the first thing that we're gonna need to write in, um, or sorry, the hello world script, what it does is basically it'll just print up on the computer um, the words hello world. So the command that we're going to use is print, or actually I think it's really more of a function, um, but we'll get into all of that kind of stuff later. But to get it to print something up on the screen, you just type print, bracket, and then you go put in what you want it to print. Now, you've got to print a string. So just watch what I'm doing here. There's no need to type this bit in, but let's say we want it to print, you know, say we want to print hello world. Hello world. Um, now this isn't gonna work, but, and I'll show you why, but that looks like it would be right. Print what we want it to say, right? So um, I'll save, exit, and then we'll go run test, tets, test, run it. Okay, and it's saying that um, a bracket was expected. Don't worry, we'll get into that, um, what all the debug messages mean soon. Well, not all of them, but an idea of what they mean. Basically, what you need in here is for it to be a string. Now, there's several different data types. Um, there's strings. Strings are basically a string of characters. So that means actual words. Um, and they get, a string is something that you're going to be dealing with a lot. Now you can see once we put it in uh, inverted commas, so to define a string, you put it in, sorry, uh, quotation marks. Um, and you can see that now gets highlighted red, which means that's a string. That is um, computer craft telling us that so we put a string in there. So now this should work. So um, I'll just show you it working and then we'll say print. Uh, pfft. Sorry, ignore what I said just then. Test is what we call the program, and bam, the computer's saying, hello world. So why don't you now go and um, create, uh, type, do the edit, um, whatever you want to call the program. I suggest uh, just test or hello world, and then put this in, okay, go do that. Okay, well done. I'm assuming that if you've come to this point in the video, it's working. Um, now, something that you may have accidentally had a problem with is you may have put in print, but didn't we just put in print? No, we put in print with a lowercase p. Now, 
programming is always very specific. It's looking for very specific things. The computer, Lua can guess a few things that you're trying to do, um, but for the most part, you always gonna, anytime you have a problem with your code, it's probably gonna be a typo. So you've accidentally, you know, typed in, you know, print wrong or something, or you've accidentally put in a capital, something like that. It's always gotta be bam, exactly like that. Um, there are times where you are gonna have to um, put in capitals and stuff, but we'll get into that later. For now, I hope all of that went well. So when we run this program, we can see that um, when we put in, uh, when it writes hello world, it writes it underneath you know, the program that we just executed. So say we want it to actually sit up in the top left-hand corner of the screen. Um, well, what we can do is, and now this is something that you're gonna find yourself putting in quite a lot. This is gonna be very common, so this is one to remember. Uh, it's the term.clear. Term.clear. Now what term.clear does is it will clear the screen. So it'll clear everything and then it will write your code. So we'll save, we'll exit, and we'll run tests. Hello world. So why don't you try just putting in that bit there? All right, so put in term.clear, remember, no capitals, and don't accidentally put a comma in there instead of a full stop. It has to be term, full stop, clear, then close uh, closed brackets. Go do that. Okay, well done. So I'm assuming that that worked. Um, so we're getting test like that, but there's a small problem. Every time we put it in, it keeps jumping down the screen, and we wanted it to sit in the top left-hand corner of the screen. How do we fix that? Um, well, go back to type in edit test again, or you can use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to bring up um, things that you've recently put in. Um, we need to put in another term. So this time it's going to be term dot, and watch this one for the capitals and lowercase, set cursor pause. So, set cursor position, and don't type this in yet, just I'll tell you when to type stuff in. Don't jump the gun. Term.setCursorPause. Basically, this is the command we give it to tell it where to put uh, the cursor on the screen. And what we need to give it, and as you can see here, as this is a fairly normal naming convention where you say the first word with the lowercase, but then because it all needs to be one word with no spaces when we give it these kind of commands um, <clears throat> or when these kind of functions run, uh, the conventional naming for functions is you have capitals for each new word that you're chucking in there. So set cursor pause, obviously meaning set cursor position. And we're going lowercase, uppercase, uppercase. And that is almost always the norm. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's enough on that for now but before it starts getting confusing. For now, let's say we want to go to the top left-hand corner of the screen. Well, that is position. Um, one comma one. So you basically imagine X and Y coordinates running along the screen. Um, say if we wanted to go to line two, well then that would be, I believe one comma two. Yeah, the first one's your X coordinate. So say if we wanted it to go, to, instead we wanted it to go to that where the E is sitting at the moment. Well then I think that would be um, two comma one. On the other hand, if we wanted it to sit down here, on that second line where that is, then we go to comma two. And so you can imagine that's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and same one, two, three, four, five. Um, basically where every character is on the screen is basically if you imagine that as just being a coordinate or like a pixel even. Um, but we'll get into all that stuff later. For now, what you want to put in is one comma one, and that will make it sit at the top, uh, top left-hand corner of the screen. Cool, so uh, let's show that in action before you type it in. Hello world. So type that in and just be aware of your capitals and lowercases and then come on back. Okay, well done. I hope that went well for you. You didn't have too many problems. 
Now, let's start looking at what happens when you do get problems. Um, so let's just say we've accidentally put in a capital on this set cursor position. So what it's going to say is test to attempt to call nil. Now, attempt to call nil means it's trying to run a function but that you've told it to run, but it doesn't exist. It's quite, quite literally nil. You're calling something that is nil, has a nil value. Um, on null is what most other pro uh, programming languages would kind of call it, but this is Lua. Um, so, uh, oh, actually, uh, let's just go through, just run it again. So, it says test2. This 2 is our clue. It basically is saying somewhere around line 2, something's happened. You've tried to call a function, and it's nil. So, very often when you get these messages, it's going to refer to the line of code that's actually having the issue, which very much helps you in debugging. So then you can go through and go, what's wrong on line two? Ah, set cursor position. There it is. Um, so yeah, it's very picky about how you type things in. You've got to be very, very specific. Um, cool. So yeah, hopefully that's all run fine for you so far. Um, now, let's just add one last thing and then we'll wrap this up for this episode. Um, another thing that you can do is put in a sleep command. So, to tell the computer to sleep, um, I usually put in os.sleep, but I do actually believe you can just put in sleep. Maybe I'll just put in sleep. That might, I'm fairly certain this is going to work. Don't try it until I confirm it. But basically, it follows the exactly the way you've seen everything else here run, where we've got a function that we're calling, um, and it's we're putting in an input in here telling it how to perform the function. This is going to tell the computer to sleep for three seconds. And then we could say print, um, uh, I hate you all. So the computer is saying hello to the world, leaving it for comedic timing, and then saying, I hate you all. So let's see how that works out. So we'll run test. Hello world. I hate you all. So that went well. So why don't you guys now, we'll finish this up and then have a play around with the functions, that, with the stuff that you see here. Here you can now print stuff up on the screen. You can um, set where it's going to print stuff up. So why don't you play around with those coordinates, and then you can also put in a sleep. Now, something to bear in mind when you're playing around with that is anytime you put in clear, it's going to clear the screen. So if we um, put in another term dot clear, say, under this one, so we'll just go term dot clear, um, we can see that what it's going to do is run test, hello world, and then it deletes the hello world and puts up I hate you all. So that's um, something you can do. Have a play around with all of that. Get it to write stuff up on the screen, change the cursor position that it's sitting at, um, leave some, you know, sleeps, get the screen to clear itself. And then once you're comfortable with all of that, come back for episode two. Guys, I hope this has been instructional and helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, any comments, feel free to post in the comments or message me. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next episode.